Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well. Today we're doing a box office preview for this upcoming weekend which sees the new release of Transformers 1 which based off of these early estimates is projected to be probably the worst in the Transformers franchise as far as box office openings are concerned. There's been some early reactions to the film saying mostly positive things about it but obviously that still remains to be seen once more people actually go to see it. We'll get a better idea on what the general sentiment is, but it seems that regardless of what people feel about it, at least the initial opening is not set to be all that impressive. We will be talking about that and a plethora of other things, so please make sure to smash that like button, light up that fire button over on Odyssey, smash the rumble button as well. Also, make sure that you are subscribed, hit that bell, that way you get notified every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So going off, starting off first at Box Office Theory uh, with Sean Robbins, he talks here about how for Transformers 1, right now the traditional industry estimates so this is what most industry so-called experts are using they're projecting the film to make somewhere around 30 million dollars or more with right now the box office theory estimates being a range of between 31 and 40 million dollars so not a whole lot of difference here right we've seen some uh, major discrepancies in the past few weeks between the hollywood elites and what the box office theory uh, crew are doing and it seems very much like this is going to be much much closer so probably in that 30 to 40 million dollar range is what we can ultimately expect as some of the analysis here from from Sean Robbins says is uh, Transformers 1 is tracking strongest among young male audiences obviously because it is indeed Transformers with some core appeal to older nostalgic fans of the franchise the film carries two early access shows into traditional Thursday previews skewing pre-sales comparisons an 86% fresh score from Rotten Tomatoes critics obviously that means very little in today's world world especially, could aid parental appeal over the weekend, though prequels tend to lose some of their event status among casual moviegoers, and this particular IP has been well exposed in recent years, and I think it's that specific point that is probably going to hurt this film the most. Because of the Michael Bay films, because of the insanity of the Michael Bay films, because of how terrible many of the Michael Bay films were, and how many of them we got, I think people are so just burnt out on the Transformers franchise, that even a film that looks like it might actually be a bit better, takes it in a different direction is not dedicated animated uh, style movie versus the, the live action mixed uh, versions that we've seen more recently with just mindless plots and mindless stories. This one at least seems like it might actually be a pretty harmless overall story. The problem, though, is because of that massive exposure of the IP and because people are burnt out on it, I think, and we've seen that in the numbers with more less and less people going to see these films over time. Yeah, I think that's going to be definitely the biggest problem for the film going forward. And I think that that's probably what's going to lead it to land somewhere in this $30 million range. I think that that is definitely something that is going to be uh, going to be the case here. It says, ultimately, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, on the other hand, should remain a strong factor in its third frame with positive reception, plenty of family appeal, and Hollywood season as key drivers. Its biggest disadvantage, or uh, for now, will be the loss of premium screens to Transformers 1, denting the juice's average ticket price and inflating the perceived drop from last weekend. And I think that ultimately, uh, that sometimes is indeed a factor, but I do think sometimes people put a little bit too much stock in the loss of premium format screens. Yes, that does lead to a loss in overall ticket value. However, if people are going to see a film and want to go see a film, they're going to continue to go see it. And so I think that ultimately the drop in overall uh, amounts of money that you make is pretty marginal, right? We we've seen this happen before where you've had major films, major releases do very, very well in their first few weeks. And then as soon as they drop premium formats, they still continue to do well uh, without having massive drop offs. And so I think that will probably be the case also for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice as well. There's also a new film called The Substance. It says here has generated healthy traction from its early access and preview shows, uh, plus an 89% fresh score from Rotten Tomatoes. And again, hilarious that these scores are all being put out there very early on, whereas the film, Am I Racist, has only just gotten its score revealed after two negative reviews were finally added in. Very, very convenient, but... I digress. Let's go into the actual chart here on Box Office Theory. Transformers 1, $35 million is right now the projected opening, right, in that $31 to $40 million range, whereas Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice predicted to have a 49% drop, as I'd mentioned, not a very strong, uh, sorry, not a very uh, big drop off, right, actually a pretty strong hold ultimately of only about 50% is being projected right now, of $26.3 million being the total bring its domestic to 20, uh, $226.6 million, so continuing to add overall to its coffers. Again, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, a film 
that is definitely in that uh, profitability territory looking to make a pretty good amount of money to boot we'll go more into those actual details in a few minutes speak no evil uh, in its second weekend expected to drop 53 percent so not the worst drop-offs in the world for a film that costs very little as i'd mentioned last weekend this film also on the pathway to breaking even i do uh, and making some profit as well i personally was not a big fan of the film i thought that james mcavoy was amazing in it but the characters were so just stupid in the decisions that they made it made it very very hard to care about anyone else on screen james mcavoy character of course was insane and he's been playing that character so well recently so shout out to him uh and hey shout out to them for being able to make a film that is definitely going to be making some money for them the new film the substance no actual budget being reported as of the recording of this video so obviously that can change uh some early indicators are including that it might have cost in that 20 million dollar range or so we'll have to wait and see but as of right now expected to only make four million at 1,700 screens. Again, not the biggest of openings, it seems, for that film. Never Let Go, and it's also going to be a new release here. This is the new Halle Berry film, which uh, Halle Berry has not had the biggest, best track record, in my opinion, in acting performances. The concept of the film does seem interesting enough, uh, but again, it's a Lionsgate release, and Lionsgate has been notorious for having the worst box office uh, releases, and it's just kind of insane that this is going to continue. So, 2,600 screens for this film, only 3.6 million uh, is going to be uh, what the film is expected to make this film has a decent sized budget so yeah uh, not not looking good for Lionsgate continuing. Uh, Deadpool Wolverine's finally getting bumped bumped down, or at least projected to get bumped out of the top five. Thirty nine percent hold there, another three point two million, getting its total to three six hundred twenty six point five. So again, still a film looking to probably end around six hundred forty million dollars domestic by the end of its run. Reagan hanging around as well, thirty one percent drop there. As I mentioned before, though, the budget size means this film not likely to make its money back. And my race is expected to drop sixty percent, uh, but also said to be around fifteen hundred screens, so not expected to lose too many. Screens screens. Uh, obviously, we'll obviously track that and see what the overall report is as far as how many screens that it has. Um, and this will be, I think, probably the one that is going to be the most difficult to track is how many people are actually going to see this film second weekend. Um, you know, are we going to see higher higher than expected numbers, lower than expected numbers? Remember that uh, going into last weekend, Box Office Theory projected the film to make around $8 million and only ended up making four. Uh, and I obviously know that in, again, in comparison to its budget, in comparison to documentaries from the last several years, it is definitely one of the best openings in that specific area, but still coming in underneath projections from at least two other box office tracking sites, box office theory being the one and box office report being the other. So that is something that, of course, that does need to be mentioned. Can't take away the fact the film is still doing well and is at the point of making its money back uh, very, very quickly. It Ends With Us is now going to be dropping 36%. And The Killer's Game, a Lionsgate film that came out last weekend to very low numbers, dropping 52%. So yet another box office loser for Dave Bautista and also for Lionsgate. Going over to the box office pro, which remember completely ignored last week's uh, Am I Racist? Transformers 1 expected to make between 25 and 35 million. So we're seeing a very uh, consistent trend here. Uh, 30 to 40 million being that range uh, for these different films. The number two film expected to be Beetlejuice Beetlejuice of 25 to 30 million. So yeah, potentially you could see Beetlejuice Beetlejuice maybe even have a bit of um, a bit of competition for Transformers 1. So we'll see which one comes out at top. I would probably put my money on Transformers 1, but stranger things have happened. And then Never Let Go is actually for them expected to get the number three spot uh, with uh, four to eight million dollars there. And so as you can see, they are putting uh, Never Let Go um, a little bit higher than what you would see from uh, Box Office Theories. And again, it's interesting how this is now two weeks in a row where their, their numbers have been quite different. Again, last weekend, though, we do know that it did not, you know, am my racist did not get the number three spot as had initially been projected going over to box office uh, report which tends to be a little bit closer to what box office theory does transformers one expected to make 36 million dollars over there so again very similar story from what we've seen before beetlejuice beetlejuice expected to get that 27 million dollar range speak no evil six million dollars there in the number three spot with the substance the new film 4.3 never let go at 4.2 so they're seeing a battle between those two films then deadpool wolverine am i racist at 2.4 million they're expecting only a 47 percent drop from last weekend and then Reagan rounding out rounding out the top eight in that instance and so again very very consistent numbers across the board there as far as what is projected to happen ultimately I would say I probably lean more towards the box office theories of the world box office reports of the world they seem to be a little bit more consistent in their data analysis but obviously they were wrong when it came to the total for MI racist last weekend over projecting in fact which was a surprise uh, but still 
the numbers are what they are. Let's go over to the charts because we love charts here on OMB Reviews just to give you an idea of why we're probably looking at some more massive flops this weekend. Uh, so in the case of Transformers 1, $30 million again versus a $75 million budget. It's not the worst type of opening in the world, and that's just looking at the domestic market. So this film could very well be a massive success, a massive hit in those international markets. But it is important to note, right, that when it comes to the Transformers franchise, it has just not been doing as well over time. I think that we have to look back to the last of the Transformers films and look back. Let's see if I even have that on my... Uh, my chart here because I think I do have the last uh, of the films there. No, I do not. Uh, but I remember that there was the Transformers Rise of the Beast. That film did not do well financially when it came to its box office results. And so, again, this film costing probably a little bit less than that movie at $75 million. Still not expected to be a huge moneymaker if I had to guess. We'll have to wait and see. Again, good word of mouth can always change that story. This seems to be having some early good word of mouth, but still a little bit too early to tell. The substance, as I mentioned, there's no official budget yet as of recording of this video, but there was some search that I did that showed the number $23 million. I don't know where it got it from. It's interesting to play around with some of these AI features because one day you ask them, it gives you a number. The other day it says, I can't find that. So whatever the case might be, let's just go. That's why it's got the line through it because we cannot confirm this is the actual budget itself. But if it is $23 million, it would need to make around $57 million to break even. And based on these early numbers, doesn't seem like that would happen. But again, way too early and we don't have an official budget never let go as i'd mentioned is not expected to have the biggest of openings at a 20 million dollar budget it needs to make around 50 plus million to break even so yeah those kinds of early numbers are not looking good for that film so even these smaller mid-budget films are not really in a position to make their money back in today's world that's why when people say oh the box office is back baby when you've got these massive billion dollar films in inside out 2 and deadpool wolverine yes obviously those are impressive numbers there for those individual films but the rest of the box office market is not seeing similar success and I think that these again mid-budget films are especially showcasing that very fact uh, the killer's game at 30 million dollars is again going to be a flop based off of these numbers that we have only 3.6 million or so being reported as of now in total overall revenues uh, we have uh, uh, speak no evil at 15 million is actually doing much much better and I think that this film you're going to see probably hit its break even point sometime this uh, uh, potentially sometime this weekend right as of the recording of this video let's go ahead and see if we can update these numbers if they have not been updated this should be updating in real time, but obviously we know when it comes to technology, it does not always work the way that it should. What is interesting, though, is that around $6 million that MI Racist has made so far, it's only about $1.1 million in the red based off of actual data. Remember, this is not just based off of the $3 million budget, which has now been confirmed by uh, Matt Walsh, but also it does have a marketing budget as well. And they marketed that film pretty, pretty well. So I would say probably a typical marketing cost of about, you know, you take half the budget, add that on top. So probably a total cost of around 4.5 to $5 million. So it, yeah, it still needs to make a little bit more money to break even, especially since they don't get 100% of the box office receipts. But that's going to probably happen this weekend. So this film looking to hit profitability after two weeks, which is also impressive for any film, let alone a film that's being shunned by many, that's being ignored and, and derided by the elite, uh, the elite critic class, and still doing very well and still a very entertaining movie to boot itself. Killer's Game, as I mentioned, right, is not looking to make its money back, but because it costs so little, it could. Right. So it's looking like we're you know, sorry. This is speak no evil. Uh, 40 million. So 10 million dollars left. Yeah, I think that this probably will break even either this weekend or uh, in the course of the next two weeks, because, again, low budget doing well enough. Uh, Killer's Game, on the other hand, 43 million in the red. Yeah, this is not going to make its money back by any means. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is going to hit profitability by the end of this weekend based on the numbers that we're seeing right now. And then, of course, we've got the other films from this weekend. Uh, 1992, uh, some budgets now are being reported as it being costing only five million dollars. I doubt that is the case based off of who's in the film and and how that stuff typically works so uh, again take that with a grain of salt either way it's making almost nothing at the box office afraid also not doing a whole lot at the box office reagan cost a little bit too much 23 million in the red for that film the crow obviously is already gone is already out 67 million dollar flop there not the biggest of the year but still pretty bad blink twice also looking to flop as well and alien Ron is continuing to add to its overall profits and those are the box office numbers as they stand today so what are y'all thoughts do you think that transformers one is going to easily take the weekend do you think beetlejuice beetlejuice could potentially have a bit of a competition with that film and also do you think that when it comes to these new films transformers one the substance uh never let go that any of these films are going to be any good are going to make any surprise splashes let me know any of those thoughts in the comment section down below if you like this video smash that like button a lot of that fire button Aussie awesome. smash the little rumble button as well you guys are all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful for the rest of your day, a blessed Friday, and as always, God bless.
now for a huge special shout out to all of my chosen of Valhalla members, starting off first with my people on Patreon, Father Luca Illick and Miss Martin Muses. Check out her YouTube channel by the same name, Miss Martin Muses. Also to my subscribe star people, Matt317. Check out his Twitch channel by the same name, Matt317. And also to Man, Check out his website, xtheboundaries.co. And lastly, to my YouTube member, Mr. Roy, Shout out to you, good sir. And if you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream and video, check out the top link in the video description below where you get access to that. Also, you get access to a plethora of other things. You get your name listed at the end of every live stream and video like you saw in those names that came up before this video started. And also access to a giveaways channel that I host over on the Discord server where I give away 4Ks, Steelbooks, Blu-rays, all kinds of stuff. So check that out if you're interested in that. Also, I have an exclusive podcast that I hold at least once a month and uh, it's always a good time and you get extra bonus content with that also so if any of that sounds interesting again check out that top link in the video description below you guys are all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful rest of your day a blessed august and as always god bless